The NGRX Entity Package provides functions for managing entity collections. If you've used NGRX Store before, you may use Entity to manage common CRUD operations on collections in a type safe way. NGRX Entity can also be used with Component Store on its own. Although NGRX Entity does depend on NGRX Store for its selectors, it's not required that you have NGRX Store set up in your application. To use NGRX Entity, install the NGRX Entity and NGRX Store packages. I'm going to use Yarn Add here to install both of these packages together, but you can install them separately if needed. Now let's look at the product store again. First, we'll import the entity state interface and create entity adapter from the NGRX entity package. The entity state interface has two properties, IDs and entities. These are used for storing and retrieving items in the collection. Next, we'll update the product state interface to extend the entity state and use the product interface to infer the shape of the collection of products. After that, we'll use the create entity adapter function to create an adapter that is used to manage common operations on the collection. Now that the interface is updated, the initial state must be updated also. The adapter provides the get initial state method that returns the entity state properties along with any additional properties you provide, such as the current product ID in this case. Next, we'll use the get selectors method on the adapter to give us some predefined selectors for querying data from the products collection. In this case, we'll use select all, which is an array of all products, and select entities, which is a dictionary of products by ID for fast lookups. Now that the adapter is set up, let's update the selectors in the product store. We'll use the select all selector from the adapter to get all products. Next, we'll add a product entity selector that gives us the dictionary of products by ID. Because we have a dictionary of products by ID, let's update the selected product observable to use the product entity selector. This way, whenever we need to look up a product, it gives us that exact product based on the ID instead of having to filter through the entire collection, making the operation much faster. Moving on to the load products effect, we'll update the collection of products using the set all method on the adapter, passing into products and state as arguments. For the add product effect, we use the add one method with a single product and pass the state along with it also. For the update product effect, we use the update one method with an object of an ID and changes. The ID is used to get the existing product and the changes property is a partial of the updates to the product in the collection. And for the delete product effect, we use the remove one method with the product ID. The existing state is passed along with each adapter method to update the state immutably. You can also provide your own state object to perform additional operations, like removing the current product ID for the deleted item in addition to removing it from the collection. Going back to the application, the products collection is still managed in the same way, but with a more consistent way to handle collections using NGRX Entity. And that's a walkthrough of NGRX Entity with NGRX Component Store. Also, if you want to check out a library that has Component Store and NGRX Entity wrapped into a single library, you can check out the RxBind Entity Component Store Library by Marco. And I'll link to that repo in the description below. Also, if you like this video, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel as that really helps me out. And with that, I'll see you in the next video.